Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So in our previous video, we have already covered several concepts related to Kafka, like considering how to install Kafka in your local system. Then we have covered what is the concept of Kafka, fundamental components like brokers, okay, topics, zookeeper, and then we discussed in detail about the Kafka producer, consumer, their integration with Python, and then we eventually moved to schema registry. We discussed how to implement schema registry using conductor as well as AWS glue and we seen their integration with Kafka cluster using Python, right? Now today we are going to discuss another important topic related to Kafka and that is called Kafka Connect. Okay, a very important topic and many industry use this particular feature in their Kafka related big data pipeline, okay? So what is that? At least the fundamental knowledge you should be having if you want to start work with Kafka in any industrial project, okay? So without any further delay, let's directly jump into the theory section. So today we are having multiple data sources from where we need to ingest the real-time data in our Kafka cluster. And similarly, we are having multiple target data store where we need to write the data from Kafka cluster, right? That is producer has lot of sources and in the consumer side we have different different targets now consider a situation where you got the requirement that is you will be having a text file and you need to read that particular text file in real time and then write that in kafka cluster and from the kafka cluster there are different consumer maybe one consumer is postgresql another consumer is snowflake another consumer is elastic search they are consuming the data okay now suppose you are the developer you know how to read a text file in real time the data whatever coming how to read that using a kafka producer and publish into kafka that you know and in the consumer side suppose you have working experience with snowflake but you have not worked how to write a consumer code which will publish the data from kafka cluster to postgre or kafka cluster to elasticsearch even you have not earlier worked with elasticsearch itself okay so this is just one instance i am talking instead of text file the source can be some database system okay and now suppose you are having only one developer that developer might have partial experience about some of the sources among many sources what your current project is using and he or she is having only certain destination experience might be he or she don't know other destinations okay so for a particular developer it is very hard to always write different different custom codes for our in number of source systems and in number of destination systems okay and obviously it is also quite possible that suppose when we get a requirement that from text file we need to publish the data in kafka and postgresql we need to consume okay so that is not like we are doing for the first time might be some other engineers already have done that kind of work right so that's where our lives become easy that if suppose some engineer has already worked on that kind of source and destination then if we can reuse their code with certain configuration changes right and that's where Kafka Connect comes into picture so Kafka Connect is nothing but a robust scalable low or no code configuration driven approach using which you can basically pull the data from different source systems and publish into Kafka cluster and similarly you can consume the data in different target system from Kafka cluster if already some developer has done work on that particular source and destination topic then you can take their code basically that is reusable code and there you modify certain configuration and then you can reuse their code to publish the message in Kafka or to consume it in the target system okay so that is nothing but configuration driven approach and the developer who has earlier worked on that might have written a reusable code for this particular purpose that the next developer no need to write that much complex code which is robust as well as scalable okay right so that makes our life easier so i hope you understood that the kafka connect solves one of our major problem that if we are having different different source and different different target then consuming the data in kafka cluster and similarly publishing from Kafka cluster to the different target system. For that, we can use a reusable configuration driven code and that is nothing but called as Kafka Connect, okay. So it is basically a jar file. So there is a reusable jar file which a developer will build once and then he or she will share with different other developers who can reuse by changing the configuration, okay. 
to the configuration is all you need to carefully handle rest part the jar file the heavy lifting is done by some other developer we are just using okay so now the question comes how the kafka connect fits into the system and the data architecture that is in our detail pipeline so it looks like this so we are having our source system and here we are having our kafka cluster where multiple brokers are available within brokers we are having topics etc etc and here we are having our target system so basically from source system to publish the data in our kafka cluster we can use kafka connect which is called kafka connect source okay or source connect okay what the source connect does it basically read and ingest the data in our kafka cluster from the source system to a particular topic okay now in this right hand side what we are having it is called kafka connect sync so what it does this kafka connect sync basically write the data from kafka to a non kafka system non kafka system can be our target system that is postgresql snowflake elastic search google bigquery etc etc in number of target system is possible okay and that's how the Kafka Connect fits in our big data pipeline, right? Now, in order to efficiently work with Kafka Connect, there are some concepts, theoretical understanding you should be having about some particular topic. So, like first one is connector. So, what is connector? So, connector in Kafka Connect is a job that manages and coordinates the task. So, what is task? I will discuss. So, connector basically decides how to split the data copying work between the task. Now, what is task? Task is a piece of work that provides service to accomplish actual job. So in simple words, you can understand like this way. Our actual job is what? Our actual job is either copying the data from a non-Kafka system to our Kafka cluster. That is basically I'm talking about source Kafka connect. Or maybe in the right hand side, we have seen that sometime we need to push the data from Kafka cluster to a non-Kafka cluster. That is basically kind of acting like consumer, right? That is called sync Kafka connect. So the main activity is data copying work. So that data copying work actually is done by tasks. There are multiple tasks which work parallelly and that's where the parallelism comes in our Kafka cluster, okay? And how the different small, small tasks synchronize or communicate between each other or how the coordination is established that is done by our connector okay so connector is the job that manage and actually coordinate the task and task is something which is basically actual work it is doing that is the copying the data okay so there are multiple tasks maybe you can configure while creating the configuration file for your connector let's see this should be maximum number of tasks if you are putting maximum number of tasks as five so basically five parallel processing will happen while data copying okay and that five parallel processors will have a coordination using the connector plus as simple as that so connectors drive the actual job into smaller pieces and their smaller pieces are called tasks like in big data world often happens that a actual work is divided into multiple small small components and then they are computed parallelly so that parallel processing happen due to execution of multiple tasks in parallelly and connector is basically something which manage and coordinate them okay and connector drives the actual job in smaller pieces as task in order to have parallelism and scalable data copying with very little configuration okay so whenever you're using kafka connect you no need to write a new kind of code and make some complex development all you need is to configure the configuration file or properties file properly okay right i will discuss when i will show you the demo you will understand in a better way okay right so i hope the concept of connector task is clear to you and the last thing is work card. So obviously this task, which is basically our connector is splitting the data copying activity between multiple small, small chunks that will run on something, right? And that is called work card. So work card is the node that is running the connector and its task. Okay. So connector is basically coordinating small, small components. Those are called tasks. Tasks are basically doing the actual data copying activity. And then the whole thing are running in which node that is called work card. Okay. Work card can be standalone work card or distributed worker okay in standalone mode what happens that suppose for your particular kafka connect you have configured that maximum number of tasks should be five so all five tasks will run on a single node okay so that is nothing but for doing some poc you can use that standalone cluster or standalone mode of kafka connect or else in production system we use distributed mode okay so just an example or visualization of distributed mode looks like this what happens here so we are having multiple nodes okay so this together is called as kafka connect cluster 
so as you know one cluster has multiple nodes or multiple vms right so here in kafka connect cluster there are multiple worker nodes so here we are having worker 1 worker 2 worker 3 okay and there are multiple connectors are running for example there is a connector kafka connect 1 running which is basically copying the data from postgresql and then putting in our kafka cluster okay so suppose that is connector 1 and in your case suppose you are having total 6 partitions now in the configuration file you have mentioned that maximum number of tasks should be 3 so there should be 3 parallel processing happening in the back end actually so here you can see here task 1 for the connector 1 is running which is handling the partition 1 and 2 task 3 here see it is running in a different worker or different node okay which is basically taking the responsibility of completely different partition 5 and 6 okay so all are running parallelly and different different nodes so th that's why it is called distributed mode and here our connector 1 is running which is basically coordinating among different tasks okay so suppose one worker node fails then rebalancing should happen okay and if worker node newly spin up then distribution of work should happen so all this what we generally study in our map reduce system or our spark any big data uh, system that same concepts basically happen here also i am not going to those things in detail i hope you can easily understand then similarly here suppose another connector running in our kafka connect cluster okay so here our connector 2 is running and here see one task is running for connector uh, 2 that is basically handling partition 3 and partition 4 and here another task is running task 1 which is handling partition 1 and partition 2 okay this task 1 and task 2 are getting communicated or the proper synchronization is happening within this particular connector 2 which is running that is nothing but a class written in java okay so that's how basically distributed mode works right so i hope you understood that whenever we run our kafka connect there are two possibilities one is standalone mode one is distributed mode okay right what is the difference i hope you got the idea so now let's see another picture which can give you some better feeling out of it okay so actually the kafka connect as i told you that it is a separate cluster which is not in our kafka cluster okay so actually in real world it looks like this here we are having our source system that we are having n number of source system postgresql mysql oracle etc etc okay and now here we are having our kafka connect cluster where multiple workers are there so as i told you cluster is basically formed of multiple nodes and here node we are calling as worker right so within that particular cluster we are having multiple worker nodes within worker different connectors are running i hope after this you got it now what this side worker taking the responsibility that is basically this side is nothing but our source connector so it will read the data from source and write in our kafka topics okay the topics are present inside kafka brokers or kafka servers and that is nothing but coming under kafka cluster okay so kafka cluster and kafka connect cluster are different now in that connect cluster in some workers some connectors are running which are sync connectors basically their responsibility is to read the data from kafka and write in some non kafka system so what the sync connectors will do which are running in connect cluster only so they will read the data from different topics as per our configuration file and then they will write in different different destination system now here what connect cluster i have shown and here what connect cluster i have shown that can be one single cluster itself it is not like we source connectors will run always in a separate cluster and sync connectors will run always in a separate cluster Generally, in our production system for Kafka Connect, we are having one cluster. For Kafka, we are having one cluster. For schema registry, we are having some separate standalone system, right? So basically, this particular part and this particular part can be combined and it looks like this. Okay, this is a better diagram how actually system works. So here we are having n number of source system from where our source connectors are reading the data and writing in Kafka cluster. Okay. So here you can see indicator 1 is given that is indicating that here our source connectors are reading the data from source where they are running they are running in connect cluster within multiple workers if you have configured standalone mode then here what will happen that within one worker only all the tasks will run if you have configured distributed mode then the work will happen in a distributed manner now the source connector will read the data from source and write in our kafka cluster within brokers different topics are available and based on configuration file the data will be written in a particular topic okay so that's what the two arrow is indicating okay now here we are having multiple streaming app 
they are basically reading the particular data from different topic doing some aggregation activity or whatever they are doing and maybe they are writing in another topic okay after processing the data okay within Kafka cluster only now we are having our destination system so what happens here see arrow 4 so here we are having some sync connectors basically that is called consumer side they will read the data from the topics based on our configuration and then from the Kafka it will basically write in our destination system and the sync connectors are also running in the same connect cluster where our source connectors are running so that's why I have shown here only one connect cluster okay right so that's how this particular picture actually works in real world environment so I hope the foundation of Kafka connect concept is clear to you now I will switch to demo okay so basically I will explain you one particular Kafka connect in the sync side or the in the consumer side and that is snowflake Kafka connect that is how we can configure a reusable code for our purpose to push the data from Kafka topics to our snowflake cloud data warehouse platform so here I will provide that particular link of the video where the explanation is available for snowflake sync connector you can go through that and then you will understand that how the reusability helps us to do our development very fast that is one developer might have done that development that is from Kafka to Snowflake how to push the data they have built once and now we are using their jar file just we are reusing by changing some configuration okay like from what topic the data should be pushed to which table in Snowflake what should be the Snowflake account name this kind of details we need to provide otherwise Kafka will not know in which Snowflake account our table is available right in which database we need to put the data in which schema our table is available this kind of configuration which is specific to our use case that we need to provide rest the main code which is basically copying the data from Kafka to Snowflake that will be handled by the reusable code okay so stay tuned just watch my next video also so that you will get a real hands on and then we will make a beautiful project out of it in our upcoming videos okay so i hope you understood this this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you